come before your throne right now as a company of people full of your glory, full of your fire, not because of what we've done, not because of the things that we find ourselves doing, but the fact that we are in Christ, seated in heavenly places, that we are clothed and dressed in the fullness of yad Hey, shen vav Hey, that dimension of the Father that has come into creation for us to step into, to live and move and have our being in, to literally elevate into the heavens and to begin to set who we are in the full measure, to become what we're supposed to be. Lord, I ask that you open our hearts tonight to receive a dimension of truth, Father, that will shift us to a deeper place in you. And we begin to understand that there's a power that you want to give to your people that you have made us, created us in the image, in the likeness of an eternal being, yes. an almighty God that has no flaw, has no, pro has no issues, has no problems, has no lack, yes. only has fullness of life, yes. supernatural, almighty, infinite being. Yes. And we are created in your image, yet we are lacking, struggling, dying. Lord, I ask you to open us up. I pray, Father, that you will pour into us a dimension of revelation tonight that will yes. shift us into believing something different. Shift us to begin to see something slightly other than what we have believed previously. That part of our being that's bound to theology that was taught. Lord, I pray that as you begin to pour into your people, like Isaiah 2 says, a company of people will go up into the mountain of the Lord and he will teach them. Father, let us go up into the mountain of the Lord so we can be yes. taught by you, my King. Yes. Father, we love you, we praise you, we thank you that you have sent into creation leg legislators, oracles, kings, priests, and sons. Father, and we are the ones, a company of people, a, a, the ecclesia, the full measure of all of who you are. Those who are set in Christ have the capacity to come out of the kingdom of heaven fully dressed in all of who you are. Wow. To stand in the measure that you did and do the things that you did, but even greater, you said. Father, we're excited. We love you. We praise you. I ask you to open up our hearts and set in our bones the things that needs to propel us forward. Father, you are incredible. Thank you, Yeshua. Yes, Amen. You, Amen. Amen. Yeah. Can we just switch that light on? Sure. Because, uh, yeah. Okay, so what I'm going to try and do tonight, I might have touched base on this before, but... It's to remind you that as he is, so are you. You know, I mean, we forget this sometimes because we're so set on our flesh. Yes. We're so set on the natural. And I'm not saying that's the wrong thing. It's logic. It's what's yeah. going to happen. You're going to wake up in the morning and your shoulders are going to be sore. Your hips are going to be sore. You might have an ankle problem. You might not feel so well in your head. You might have a headache. You know, you might have some toothache. You know, you might be a stuffy nose or your eyes are all bloody and red. You know, there's some pollen in the air or something is going on in your life. You might have a chronic sickness or disease that you can take medication for. So before you can do anything, you need to take your med medication. And that's life. That's most of us. And that's 90% of Americans. I'm sorry to say it like that, but I've noticed that. <laughs> okay, I have to go to the doctor. <laughs> you just can't. <laughs> I'm getting sick. Like, just give your body the chance to heal you. Right. You know, you can't just run to the doctor. I had a lady friend the other day. I said the other day, it could have been many years ago. But she was in the ER because she had the flu. Now, I know it sounds like, oh, well, maybe it was really bad. No, no, your body can work this out. Mm -hmm. You have been designed by God Himself. Right. You know, how does Noah, Noah live until he's 950 years old? Yeah. Huh. Oh, really? There's no doctors. Yeah. There's no nothing there. He, he, there must have been a system, structure, right. an order right. that we have lost. Right. right. Yeah. Now, of course, the food was much different than our food. Oh, yeah. Right. Right. Pure. Right. Clean, yeah. yep. you know, no, no corruption yeah. in it like right. like ours. Right. You know, nowadays you have a piece of steak and it might be the most delicious thing you've ever had. Yeah. But in that meat is yeah. every steroid you can find. Yeah. Right. You know, every substance that could possibly known to man to better yeah. an animal or make it live longer right. or grow faster right. or right. have yeah. cleaner meat or leaner right. meat or whatever. Right. And the right. process to right. get him to where he's on your plate. Right. It's not as clean as what it might think, you might think it is. Right. You know, so yes, our bodies and who we are is affected. So what I'm saying is, it's normal and natural in our thinking to be, oh, well, I have to go to the doctor today. Right. Or I have to go do this, I take my medication. Right. Um, I have an elbow problem, my shoulder right. hurts, my neck hurts, all these issues that we have on our day-to-day -day basis. But Yeshua wants to get a company of people to a place 
where we understand body, soul, spirit, who we fully are. Right, mm -hmm. right. So we're going to take a look a little bit at Yeshua and his full measure. Right. When Yeshua comes into, when, when Yeshua brings uh, the full measure of who he is back into creation, it's going to be in the form of his body, mm -hmm. which is me and you. Mm -hmm. It's going to be in the form of the ecclesia. Right. And we understand this and we know this, but we have to remind ourselves for that to truly happen, we have to excel mm -hmm. in our body, soul, and spirit. Right. We have to be fully merged mm -hmm. in what we are to become. We cannot right. continue in the structure that we're busy with because the structure right. that we are busy with is telling us that we're going to die. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, because the normality is, well, you reach a certain age and then you're going to yeah. start getting arthritis. Right. You're going to start getting back problems and joint issues. Yeah. Right. And your sight's going to start fading and your urine is not going to be as good anymore. Right. And you're going to start walking a little bit slower and the arthritis is going to start eating your bones. And, right. and you're going to find yourself bent forward. And before you know it, you have all these uh, issues and problems. And you, know, you never really die of old age. Right. You die of organ Disease. failure, heart attack, right. you know, whatever. Right. Strokes. Yeah. And of course, we have to begin to understand that's no longer part of the curse. Right, right, right. A man shall only live until he's 120 years old. Mm -hmm. We don't even reach that. Right. Yeah, that's true. So we don't even, we don't even, we don't even reach the, the curse point. Right, right, right. Help us, Jesus. Right. 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 Now, I say that, but in the same measure, it's the way we think. Right. Because if Yeshua brought restoration, mm -hmm. right. then he didn't just bring restoration for my salvation. No. Yeah. He brought restoration for body, soul, spirit. Right. Right. Because Jesus wasn't just body. Right. Right. You know, and we have to look at who he was and every attribute right. of who he presented to creation. Right. Because it was the way he think. Right. It was the way he excelled and the way that he spoke. Right. And it wasn't just his body. Right. It was more than that. It wasn't just his spirit that right. well, goes up into a mountain and our Greek mind says, oh, he must have climbed the mountain. Right. Right. But his spirit went into another dimension. So there's, right. there's aspects that we need to look at that propels us, yeah. right? Yeah. Right. That he might present to himself the church, the ecclesia, in all her glory, having no spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that she would be holy and blameless. Now, again, I don't want to go into the irritation of the body of Christ still thinking that we are the bride. Right. Okay, I cannot still think that way because that's not where Yahweh is taking us. Okay, that establishes a belief system of one day. Right, right. One day when I am married to Jesus. Mm -hmm. But for now, I'm just the bride. Now, the bride has no intimacy. The bride has no inheritance, the bride has no right, and the bride can do whatever the hell she wants to. Right. Right. right? But the body is right now, right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. can't do what it wants to, right. is 100% submitted to him. It, has, it can only go where he wants to go. Yeah. It can only do what he wants to do. Right. And it has full inheritance in him because it's part of him. Right. right. It's one with him. Right. right. And it's a mind change. It's a mind shift. Right. But... This body of people has to be holy and blameless. Now again, remind yourself that it's really not about what I do as much as what it is about who I am. Yeah, what he did. So it is my understanding to accept Christ as my Savior that shifts me and recreates me into a different species. Yeah. So I'm no longer a human being, I am now a spirit being. Right. I no longer speak to my spirit, I am spirit. Right. Yeah. I don't have a spirit. Mm -hmm. right. But I am spirit that has a soul that lives in a body. And of course, the function and the desire eventually to move out of the body and have the body and the soul live in the spirit. Right, right. right? Because the spirit is the primary me. It's yeah. not the more important me. It's balance. Because right. the, the father is not more important than the son. Mm -hmm. And the son is not more important than Rosh right. Hadesh. Right. You say, well, you know, the father is more important. Now, if you think that there is God the father as I am the father. Mm -hmm. And he, Jesus Christ, oh, the little boy. That was birthed out of the father and the mother, right. which then I guess the Holy Spirit has to be the mother. Right. This is our thinking. Right. Because that's how we've been taught to believe. Now, not quite in those words, but subconsciously, that's the belief system that you hooked on to. Right. So I, because I had someone argue, not with me, but I listened to a, a, a TikTok, and they were saying, so you're saying the father is more than Jesus. And the guy was like, no, they are one. Right. They are one being. No, the Father is the Father, and Jesus is the Son. Right. So and so there was this argument that I was listening to, and I was right. thinking, 
They both have a relevant uh, argument, right. but the idea behind what Yahweh wants to establish is that there's one God. One God. Mm -hmm. And that one God has three entities. Right. 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 And he presents those entities in the form of a son, right. in the form of a father, right. and in the form of a Ruach HaKadosh, Holy Spirit. Right. Right. Because each one of those three attributes, and of course we understand three, establishes governance. Right. Right. One can't establish government. Right. One man right. can't run an entire creation. Right. Right. One man can't run an entire kingdom. Right. The king has advisors. Mm -hmm. yes. It's not just the king. Mm -hmm. Because people are crazy. Yeah. Right. They might say, well, God's not crazy, but God knows. Right. Yes. That's why it's God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. That's yes. the three. Community. Right. Uh, three is established government, right. and they will make the decisions. But that's not the governance of heaven. Mm -hmm. Because the governance of heaven is God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, and then the seven spirits, right. which is a bench of ten. Mm -hmm. We understand that's the perfect rule. Mm -hmm. So Yahweh works with those in His kingdom. Mm -hmm. He doesn't just do his own thing. Right, mm -hmm. right. <laughs> and of course, we have a space in him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's why we are the Shin. Right. Mm -hmm. right. The Shin steps into the Christ, and the Christ right. is in the fullness of Yad Hey Vav Hey. Right. Right. Therefore, I am established in God right. because there's no other species that can go back in the measure that we can. Right. That's right. Because right. we're the only ones in his image. Mm -hmm. And since each of us is part of that body, we have to be ready. You know, if one part of the body is not ready, right. then my arm is going to do whatever it wants to. Right. But I'm trying to talk and I'm going to try to present something to the body of Christ, my arm is going to be doing right. all yeah. kinds of weird things. <laughs> and I'm trying to talk and I'm trying to right. stop. <laughs> you know, that's what's happening in the body of Christ right now. Right. Some parts of the body is just doing its own thing right. because, well, this is what I've learned and this is what it should be and there's no one else can tell me a thing. Now look, I'm a little bit like that sometimes right. I, right. because I'm stubborn. Right. I, if, so, if Yahweh has shown me something and I have had to go through a process right. of changing a belief system because of previous theology that I was taught, right. I don't want to go back to that. Right. So when someone presents something in an old fashion to me, I subconsciously reject it. Mm -hmm. Then I'm stubborn and I don't want to go back. But then Yahweh would say, listen to me, son. You cannot take the baby that's in the bath water and throw all everything out. That's right. You have to kind of sift through it. That's right. You know, see what's because you might have missed some things mm -hmm. in the old age. That's right. Why? Because we're scafafling. Mm. We're Olympic scafaflers. <laughs> so even though we come out of an, an age, we might not have fulfilled the fullness of that age before we came out of it. That's right. You know, for me personally, I look at the old age structure of finances. You know, the, the prosperity message, or people that teach us a lot on finances. Um, preachers that have become really wealthy because they've taken principles out of the Bible and applied to their businesses. Right. You know, now in, the, in, the, in the new um, age where we're at now, we don't really focus on that. We don't really do that. Right. But it's because we should have had that established right. already in the previous age. Right. Right. I never got that established in the previous age. Right. So there's certain parts of my being that has to shift back into the old right. revelation, understanding of the kingdom to really get myself into position for the authority and the place that Yahweh has me for today. That's right. So it's a process. But in the same breath, Yahweh is looking for a company of people that will work together, that will be spotless and blameless, that will be ready. Right. Mm -hmm. okay. That means you have to put your effort in. Right. Right? You know, when I, I hurt my hand, and it, it took me a very, very long time to heal it. So I was busy doing Roman twists with a 45-pound uh, plate, and I threw the plate down when I was done, and as I threw it down, it bounced right back into my thumb. Wow. It hurt my hand really badly, and I think it might have damaged the bone in there right. because I had no grip for year, for about a year. Right. Right. And it was just a frustration for me to have these muscles and the strength, right. and I could do all these things with weights and stuff, but my hand, my grip was, I couldn't grip anything, I couldn't right. hold anything, so there was like a, my hand wasn't ready yet. Right. That you know, I had to go, oh, man, come on, you know, I love you so much. Right. <laughs> <laughs> You're so sweet. You need to work out. I remember the very last thing I said to my hand before it was completely healed is, I don't want to be ugly or anything, but you need to be healed right now. Do you understand? <laughs> and, and there was a bump there. 
And I smacked it and that bump went away and I was completely healed. <laughs> now, I don't know exactly what happened there, but it was there for a long time. But that's kind of the idea behind what Yahweh wants us to understand. Yeah. But if your body, if the body is not fully functional, then the things that need to be done in creation is not going to get done. Right. Then we're going to have someone saying, well, God the Father is more important than Jesus Christ. And someone else is going to say, oh, well, the Holy Spirit is more important. And someone else is going to say, oh, that's a fake Holy Spirit. And someone else is going to say, oh, that's not the truth. You know, it's always going to be an argument. argument. That's why there's eschat not eschatology, um, uh, apologetics in our faith. Right. Mm-hmm. It should not be necessary for you to defend your faith. Right. Because the love of God... Right. Yeah. Leads man to repentance. Right. Exactly. So if I just love you for long enough without right. having to try and persuade you that your religion is wrong, right. you're going to move over to my side because the frequency it, that is right. in who I am mm-hmm. is going to begin to affect you. Right. Right. And I say this, I said this to my kid, I think I might have spoken about this last time I was here, but um, I was talking to um, Hannah and I was explaining to her why music and listening to the right type of music. She was listening to some music and I was like, oh, that's really nice music. Right, you know? right, right. It, 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 it frequency with me. Right. <laughs> and right. That's something right. I just made up. But it frequency with me. So I tried to explain to her, well, 78% of who you are is water. Right. You know, and when, when, when music, which is a frequency, um, comes through you or into your ears, it, it starts vibrating that's right. in your being. Right. 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 And so it changes the molecular structure of your own personal frequency right. into what you're listening to. So if you're listening to yeah. yes, I love yes, I love, yes, you're going to get aggressive yes. and you're going to get irritated. Right, right. You know, and so much so that depends on what you receive, what's coming in, right. you'll be right. affected by it. That's just a logic right. thing. Right. You know? right. I remember them talking about um, a, 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 a thing that they did with dogs where they would play a certain type of music. Right. Uh, and then feed the dogs. Right. And as they were playing the music, they feed the dogs. Eventually, they wouldn't even have to call the dogs. They play the music, and then the dogs come. Right. Right. Because the water in, in their being right. connects with that frequency and aligns, yeah. so they know right. when that song plays, it's food time. Yeah. Right. Men do it, we do it in the gym as well. Yeah. You know, I need to be a little more aggressive when I'm in the gym, mm-hmm. because I don't want to hurt anybody around me, of course. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm at the gym, I have some heavy metal. I like listening to Skillet, which is a Christian band. They have yeah. some really yeah. nice music. It's a hard music, yeah. but it's, it's a different frequency. Right. Yeah. It's not a chill. Right. Yeah. Ooh, hallelujah. <laughs> it's a cool. Yeah, let's do this. Yeah. Yeah. It's, a, it's a different, right. if you know what I'm talking different about. Different energy. It's almost like Yahweh is calling a company of people to understand what affects you in right. the manner that you need to be affected to right. be progressing to where you're going. Right. Mm-hmm. You guys okay? Yeah. Right. This is why, okay, let me just see where I am. That is why. We are experiencing a season of purification and refining in our lives. And it's literally what Yahweh is calling us to understand. And it's again, it's not that sin-focused understanding we had of the previous ages. Where it's all about sin, 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 sin. Matter of fact, it's got nothing to do with sin. Right. Yahweh wants you to live a life of repentance on right. a daily basis. To right. changing the way you think on a daily basis. Right. It has nothing to do with your sin. Right. Because as we change the way we think, as we look upon Yahweh and engage in all the measure that He reveals and releases us to, it opens us up. Right. And I love that. For some of us, we may have uh, been here before. Uh, Because I want you to understand, if you don't change, you will get back to the same point. That's right. To change and have another opportunity to change. That's right. If you don't change, you're going to go to that same path again and again. Matter of fact, what's going to happen is you're going to walk around that mountain so many times that you will be digging your own grave. Right. That's That's exactly what you're going to do. Yeah, that's right. Change. For God is removing stumbling blocks. He is removing all the idols that we have in our lives. And and again, it is not like the religious would believe to be. Right. It's not your table, your lounge table was made in India. Right. Oh, exactly. oh, oh my God, must be the mind. <laughs> <laughs> they worship another God. Yeah. I mean, most of our stuff is made in China. What do you think about that? Yeah, right. really, that's true. That's extremely demonic. Right. Yeah. Exactly. right. But that's not, that's not the thing. That's not it. I mean, that's not true. Right. 
You know, if that was true, then what, what, what is the blood of Jesus for? Right. You know, if I trade financially into a ministry, right. I can't get everything right. that that ministry has because right. there's, there could be lust and perversion. Right. It could be murder. It could be hidden sins. Right. It could be hidden lies. Right. You know, there could be uh, uh, theft and all kinds of stuff in it. Mm-hmm. Now, I don't need that. If I go to the pharmacy and I get medication or I buy deodorant, right. I'm not trading into all of the pharmacy. I'm right. trading right. into buying myself something. Yeah. Right. Right. Because the blood of Yeshua covers everything else. Right. Right. I just want you to understand that everything is not demonic. Everything is not satanic. Everything right. is not wrong. Everything is not bad. Right. It's just right. the way we think. Right. Yeah. If God created all things, right. and everything that we believe is not of God is a perversion or a twist of His original truth. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. And, and we understand that. Well, if there's a table in my house that's made with Indians, well, I have traded into them, and my trade into them is to bless them, to enhance them, to propel them, to get them to repent and change and to live for Jesus. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. Not for them to come and affect me. Yeah. Although I am the Creator's Son. Right. Yeah. right. Well, you might say, well, they're also the creator's son. Well, unless they're born from above, they're not. Right, right, right. right. <sighs> now, you got to do now, again, in the same breath, his mercy is more than what we can fathom or understand. Yeah, right, yeah. Right, right, right. You know, we can't be bound by something someone said or something we believe. Right. We have to understand that he overrides our lack of understanding. The right. thief on the cross right. had right. no place in heaven. Right. right, right. No place in heaven. Right. But Yahweh yeah, made a spot for him because yeah, of his right. heart. Right. Yeah. You know, and the other guy, well, he didn't feel the same way towards him. Right. Right. But we don't know. Although the one said, yes, you will join me in paradise, we also understand, well, paradise is actually a word paradiso, right. which is different dimensions of the word of God. Right. It's not actually paradise. Right. But in the same breath, he didn't say anything bad about the other guy. Right. We don't know what that heart, the heart of that other man was all about. Right. You know, we believe that you have to be born again. Mm-hmm. You have to accept a sinner's prayer. Mm-hmm. Well, I've heard of people that is in heaven that shouldn't be in heaven. Right. Okay. Come on. And there's a bunch of men of God that we listen to in the Bible that shouldn't be in heaven. According right. to our understanding of, of being born again. Right. David right. shouldn't be in heaven. That's right. right. I mean, he was a nasty murderer, adulterer. Right. Mm-hmm. Well, who is it? Right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> But that, that's not what God looks at. Right. He looks at the heart of man. That's why you can't stand up in church and confess Him as Lord and Savior and be born again. Right. Just because you did that. Right. Come on. Obviously. It's not, that's not why I'm born again. I'm born again because I made a decision in my heart right. and no right. one can see. Right. 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 Exactly. And of course, the, the fruit of that decision will change my life. Right. 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 And it won't happen overnight. So I might die the next morning and be exactly the same as what I was before I gave my life to Jesus. There's no change whatsoever, right. but I go to heaven because of my heart decision. Right. Yeah. Exactly. So I can't judge whether someone has gone to heaven or hell because what happened exactly. on their deathbed is up to them and God. Exactly. Right. But of course, that's why there's sons and daughters in the atmosphere of the kingdom of earth, opening gateways and doorways, taking down giants and dragons and reestablishing the authority of the suns and the heavens mm-hmm. to get back into the atmosphere of the earth, that which is structured as blueprints from heaven into creation. Right. To open the gateways and the doorways for all that's need to be set into earth to change the lines and the views and understanding that comes into creation. Right. Because I said this before, if there's a kingdom principality, a demonic principality that, that um, oversees a mountain. Now, a mountain is a sphere of rule. Influence, right. yeah. An influence, a, a, a district that's controlled by a certain demonic entity. Right. Then whatever the Father sends into creation has to go through that mountain. Right. And if a son and a prince of roaring angel is not on that mountain, there's a demon right. on that mountain, and he will not send the full revelation into place. Right. It will be a half a truth, right. yes. won't be all the finances, right. and it will always block and stop something. Right. But now things are changing because now we're beginning to realize this. Now we're taking out the kings, we're taking out the giants, and, mm-hmm. and we're taking out the dragons, and we're reestablishing these mountains with right. suns on it, with, king, with the prince roaring angels governing from there. Mm-hmm. And things are changing because now all that seems to come into creation is coming into creation. Right. So this new understanding, all of a sudden, no more abortions. But now, I mean, in the same breath, some other guys are saying, well, you can still do an abortion when a child is uh, nine months in the womb. Mm-hmm. Like they say, what, uh, 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 what is it, um, fungus on Mars is life, but a heartbeat on Earth is not. 
Help us, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> How you guys doing? We are right. Okay. We are praying in Psalm 139. Search me, O God, and know my heart. <coughs> it is so that he can make um, us into the holy church that Yeshua can inhabit in fullness, releasing his power into the earth. Right. Yeah. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> like Yeshua said unto him, The foxes have holes, and the birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has no place to lay his head. Right. And how they got this from that, I don't know, but then all of a sudden Jesus was so poor in the middle of the I mean, even if I look at this scripture in straight blondness, that's the word. Then it wouldn't. I wouldn't come to that conclusion. Right. But we understand we're looking at it through the Hebrew principle, the Hebrew right. concept. Mm -hmm. So he's not talking about like a fox have a hole, you know, birds have a nest, but the Son of Man has no place to lay his head. That is his governance. Right. There's no place to set his image into. Right. There's no place to bring his order into. Right. Because there's chaos. Right. 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 So we need to understand once Yeshua ascended into the heavens, mm -hmm. order was reestablished mm -hmm. right. through his disciples and anybody that accepts what he did, who he is, mm -hmm. as a place of residence. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Thank God. There are some scriptures in the first letter of John that I wanted to look at. By this, love is perfected with us, so that we may have confidence in the day of judgment because, of, because He is, and so also we are in this world. As He is, so are we in this world. Right. And I, wanted to I want you to understand something, that Yahweh is waiting for a company of people to set up into an image mm -hmm. that He can set into. Right. Which means, once we are what we're supposed to be in creation, all of what the sun was measured to be in the earth, right. comes into the earth. Right. Mm -hmm. It's not the return of Yeshua. Mm -hmm. It is the full measure of the sun right. mm -hmm. of God in creation as the body. Mm -hmm. right. That's us. Mm -hmm. So we can have confidence because as He is, so also are we in this world. Mm -hmm. And He came into creation supernaturally. Right. Every morning you wake up should be a supernatural awakening. There should be a dimensional realm that shifts you right. and you should be growing and rapid, rapidly. Right. When I say that, I'm speaking to myself. Mm -hmm. you know, there's extreme frustrations and lack of focus in today's world. There's so many things that takes our, our, our focus off of Yahweh. Yeah. So many things that, that realigns us and keeps mm -hmm. us away from, from what we should be doing in the spirit. Right. You know, but we have to learn to not just reject these uh, things that comes against us to take our focus away, but to even in the midst of that, right. still be able to focus. Right. Right, right. And I say that and I immediately think of an eagle that has the capacity to put all his focus on his prey as he's coming down from a very high place right. to take out a prey or a, a fish in the water, which he can literally not even see because it's right. underwater. He has, right. he, we can't tell how deep he is under the water. I mean, maybe he can, I don't know. Right. But he has to come in and while he's busy flying downwards, mm -hmm. there's other things that he has to be seeing and be watching. Right. You know, it's not just the little prey that he's focused on. So right. he has the capacity to come down with high speeds mm -hmm. and focus on his prey yet at the same time right. while he's focusing on that one mm -hmm. thing. Yeah. See everything else around him and focus right. on that as well. Right. Yeah. Now that's something that we can do. Right. Okay. You know, we can be in the midst of temptation mm -hmm. and still be focused. That's right. Without falling for the temptation. Right. But he always says you'll never be tempted beyond what you can handle. Right. Mm -hmm. So I mean in essence, he will lead you through temptation. He's not gonna lead you into temptation. Right. 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 Because he does not tempt. Right. 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 And there's a company of people that will understand that. So we can be confident and know that uh, he will propel us. As Yeshua is, not as he was, but as he is now. Yeah. And I love that. You know, we forget that before he was sent into Mary's womb, he was God. Right. After he died and was rose again, he has always been God. Right. He's still God today. Right. You know, who we worship, who we magnify, who we glorify, it's all him. So right. for me to understand who he is right now 
It's biblical in my understanding, in my revelation, because it will change my belief system regarding who I am. Right. Because in my natural, I just see myself as a mere human. Right. right. I mean, the world, the people preach this off the pulpits. You're just a normal human being. You're going to make mistakes. You're going to struggle. You're going to fall. So it becomes okay to make mistakes and do stupid things. Right. Now, I'm not saying it's not okay. Right. I'm saying that without that mentality, without yes. thinking, well, it's okay. I'm just human. I can make mistakes right. and do things. No. It's no. I am no longer human. I'm a spirit being in His image right. and likeness and I have the power and the authority and the glory and everything that He carries in me. And I have the, 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 the desire to be like Him and I walk in the earth and I might, I might still miss the mark every now and then. Right. But how many of you understand you've got many arrows in your quiver? Right. I bought myself an arrow, the other, uh, a bow and an arrow the other day. Okay. And um, you know, I've got 12 arrows right now. So... You miss the mark, you try again. Right. Yeah. Right. But that's why we have light. Someone missed the mark several thousand times. Right. But now we have light. Right. You know, um, with it, um, Albert Einstein, he missed the mark so badly he created the atom bomb. Yeah, he did. Right. 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 Oops. Right. <laughs> How you guys doing? Oh. Yeah. He's enthroned in heaven. We are outworking that kingdom, that in, in enthronement here on the earth. Our confidence comes from knowing that He is on the throne, but I am seated with Him. Right. Right. His position as King is, is what gives us the confidence mm -hmm. to work out that kingdom right. here in our lives on the earth. Right. Reminding yourself that I'm there with Him. Right. To see what he does. Right. So that I can come and do what he does. Right. Just right. like he only does what he sees his father do. Right. How you guys doing? You okay? That's great. Yeah. Now little children, abide in him, live in him, move in him, and have your being in him. So that when he appears, we may have confidence and not shrink away from him in shame at his coming. Right. And this will only happen if you don't know him. Right. I mean, there's no way on this planet that my kids, when they see me, don't <laughs> run to me. That's right. Exactly. I mean, even, even if I come into the house and it's a mess, right. I expect them, first of all, to come running to me right. and hug me, and then I'll say, okay, guys, come. You need to tidy up the house. Right. 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 You know? And I know they might feel, okay, well, but I want them to be in such relationship with me right. that even when they do something wrong, right. they don't say, oh, I don't want to talk to my dad, I did this and this. I'd rather say, oh, I did this and this, I need, I need to speak to my dad. Right. 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 I mean, they need to have that confidence in our relationship right. to come speak to me. Right. To know right. that I'm not going to hurt them or harm them. Right. We'll first sit down and talk and discuss what needs to happen. And yeah. if a punishment is fitted, then let's do it. Mm -hmm. right. Right. You know, but the Father loves. That's right. right. It's not aggression, it's not aggressive. Mm -hmm. There is a relationship here. We abide in Him. I live in Him. If I live and move and I have Him being Him, I know everything about Him and He knows everything about me. Right. Mm -hmm. You might say, well, you can never know everything about God. Well, I know everything about God in the moment that I'm in. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. exactly. Now, there might be more moments like that because it's an infinite God. He turns one degree and everything I know about Him has to change. Right. Mm -hmm. And we understand this and we know this. So there's a movement that Yahweh wants us to propel into. Right. Right. It is an intimate relationship. And when He appears, as long as we are reminding, remaining in that relationship of intimacy, hearing and obeying His voice, doing the things that we see the Father doing, then, of course, we will greet Him with confidence. Right. This is where that friendship comes into place. Right. You know, a company of people that realizes and understand that I am going to be like my Father. And Yeshua stands before the Father in prayer and says, Now glorify me right. like I glorified you. Right. 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 Exactly. And then sometimes I drive in my car and I say those same words and I think to myself, Hmm, uh, maybe I should glorify you more. Mm -hmm. Because maybe you are glorifying me as I glorify you. <laughs> <laughs> Which is a problem. But maybe I should... I should up it a little bit. Right. Mm -hmm. If I want the full glorification, if I want things to align and change in my life, mm -hmm. I don't need to do more. I need to go deeper. Right. right. That's right. I need to become more intimate. Right. Get to know Him more. Spend more time with Him. Right. But it's not condemnation. It's not, oh, yo, dirty, dirty, down, dirty little rotten thing, you. Mm -hmm. How dare you? Mm -hmm. Right. Hmm. No.
It would be terrible to flinch away from him when he comes in glory. Right. And that will happen if you don't know him. Right. <laughs> All right? Yeah. Beloved, now we are children of Yahweh, and it has not appeared, and he has not and it has not appeared yet, as yet what will what, what we will be. Right. We know that when he appears we will be like him. Right. I want you to understand that this has happened already. Right. Because I'm already like him. Right. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So once I give my life to Yeshua, I see him, touch him, feel him, walk right. with him. Right. I'm seated in him, it's no longer I love but Christ lives in me. Right. That is no, there's a process in believing to be, bring the change that's needed. Right. There's a believing system that has to shift my thinking right. and my patterns of understanding inside right. of me to get me to full measure of what this means. Right. But I'm already like him. That's the pro same, same thing with Adam and Eve. Right. If you eat of this fruit, you'll be like God. Right. Well, it sounds great. Wow, well, I want to be like God. Well, he created you in his image. You are like him. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. You are. We know, what, we know that when He appears, we will be like Him, because we will see Him just as He is. And everybody who has, who has this hope fixed on Him purifies Himself just as He is pure. I love that. Now, uh, in the same breath, the Lamb doesn't clean itself before it's sacrificed. Mm -hmm. There's nothing I can do. I have to be in him. I have to make that decision to shift and allow him to live and move and have him so his being in me as I'm supposed right. to live and move and have my right. being in him. Right. And allow him to govern every part of your life. Right. Right. In his resurrected body, Yeshua was able to appear to his disciples, walk through walls, eat a fish and supper. Right. He was able to do all kinds of crazy things. Mm -hmm. right. right? We will be just like that. We will be like Him because His desire for us is to walk in the glorified body state right. now. Amen. You know, if Yeshua had 40 days on the earth, fully glorified, right. and He's my example, That's right. then glorification is for now. Right. Yeah. You know, there's, there's, uh, there's sites where people have appeared and disappeared many, many times in creation right now. <laughs> It's places where people have glown, uh, 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 ignited in pure light in front of big crowds. Mm -hmm. now, um, I've said this many times, but um, Nancy Cohen talks about herself walking into a satanic den. She didn't know it was a satanic nightclub, but she went in there and she was standing in the middle of the dance floor in a female suit. Mm -hmm. It looked completely different than any and everybody there. Mm -hmm. And she started glowing in pure light, didn't even see it, didn't know, she just stood there for an hour crying, sobbing for these beautiful people around right, her, right, left. Right. And two years later, some lady comes up to her and say, yeah. oh my God, I can't believe I saw you, and told her the whole story of what happened, that everybody in that place got saved. Wow. Because all she did was stood there. <laughs> so this stuff is not crazy. It's not crazy. We have to begin to believe it. Right. If Yeshua walked through walls in his glorified states, mm -hmm. um, appeared and disappeared, he had still ate fish for supper. Mm -hmm. And we have to understand there's a capacity and ability that we have that we haven't measured in full capacity yet. Right. We have to move towards it. We have to begin to believe the things that we have been told not to believe. Right. <laughs> we will be just like that. We will be like Him. Because we will see Him just as He is. You will become what you behold. That's right. If I'm worshipping Him, I will become Him. That's and in fact, right. whatever I worship, I will become. That's right. Amen. But because we have this hope, we also need to purify ourselves just as He is pure. That's so right. that we will have the same work to do. I love that. Mm -hmm. So that's exactly what He's calling us to do. Move into that realm right. where our heart is pure right. and we begin to do the things right. in the full measure just as He would do it. Right. In that measure, in that fullness, in that capacity, yeah. as he opens our hearts, as he shifts us, as he aligns us, mm -hmm. as he begins to teach us the things that we need to know as sons, right. understanding that as he is, so am I. And that's right. the full measure. Right. I love that. Now. How are you guys doing? Great. All right. Thank you. <laughs> okay. When we see him, we do not want to be carrying all the baggages that we might presently have around us. Things that we struggle with. Right. 
Why? Because those are things that hold us back. Right. You know, if you struggle mentally, emotionally, physically, spiritually, financially, socially, any one of those seven areas of your life, it's a struggle. Right. Yeah. You're not going to see him in full measure. Right. You know, you're seeing him in, in, in sections and portions and you're oh, walking in right. certain measures. Right. But, but the truth is, Yahweh wants a people that is fully set free. Right. That has full understanding of all right. arenas of life. You know, and capacity to bring a change whenever needed. That's right. You know, I know what financial success will do for me. Right. I know what emotional success will do for me. Right. I know what social success will do for me. Right. The physical success. Right. And whatever part of my being right. in full success, it will change who I am. That's right. It aligns you, gives you a different confidence. Right. Gives you a different understanding. Right. That's right. But you have to have it all right. to be fully set. You can't just have finances. Right. right. You can't just have the emotions. Right. Or the mental capacity. Right. You can't just have the physical part. Right. You can't just have the social uh, part. You have to have the whole thing fully, right. fully set. Right. That's right. right. We have an opportunity right now to be purified. Right. We can allow Yeshua to refine us, to prepare us, to meet Him fully. Right. We have the capacity to go into Him, right. see Him, touch Him, feel Him. Right. We can allow Yeshua to refine us. Right. I like that. I love that. Yep. We can allow Him to refine us. Like he already wants to, but we have to allow him to. Right. He's not going to magically come and do it for us. Right. Because if he would have done that, he would have done it for us already. Right. But it's something we have to go desire and obviously want. That's right. right. We want to be pro properly prepared to meet him face to face. <clears throat> now, I love that because I never thought I could do that. Right. And I was taught all, and all the theology I've ever studied, right. I was taught that I could not see God and live. Mm -hmm. Right. What I was not said or told is that I'm already dead. Right. Right. Because you can't say that if you're a spiritual born again Christian. Right. right. Because then I am dead. Right. It's no longer I love the Christ lives in me. That's right. But then I should be able to see my father. And that should be taught. Because if that was taught from the beginning, then right. we all would have had a different view of perception. Exactly. Right. Exactly. Because that is the truth. That's the good news. Yeah. Yeah. I have my life here and now to work on that. That's what he's calling us to right now. That's work it. on it. Put your focus on it. Right. And, and how do I make myself ready? I surrender to Him. Allow Him to do whatever He wants to do in right. me. Right. right. No, but in the same breath, I, 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 it's not... At this point in our walk, and of course I'm not talking to everybody, because some just got born again, some just been in church for 10, ten months, a year, two years, three years, four years, some has been a Christian for, for eight years, some have been a Christian for ten years, right. you know, I've been in a new, in a new up year for almost ten years, right. eleven years, that, that's a grown child, but before I stepped into that, I was already 23 years in ministry, right. you know, so it's, well, I feel like I'm mature, but I'm not matured, right. I'm still yeah. growing and I'm still shifting, right. but there's a place for everybody right now, yeah. right. but everything I teach and everything that's being taught right. is for everybody, right, right. right. You know, I mean, even if you're a, a, a five-year-old child and I start putting a little bit of algebra in your math, right. by the time you're 10, you're going to really understand it. Right. right. Process. It's a process. It's a, I have a new understanding so I can give it to those who wouldn't understand it. Right. right. Now, they might put it in Ron's file mm -hmm. and leave it for later on, but the, the idea behind it is that they've got it. And right. they can go back to it. Right. That's right. why we're speaking this into creation to break open the ground for those who is coming towards us. Thank because you. I remind you, we're all on the same road. Right. right. You know, like my mentors are far ahead of me, right. but I'm on the same road as what they are. I'm walking past the same things where they walk past. I'm stepping over the same things they step over. I'm looking right. at the same things they're looking at. I'm learning the same things they have to learn. And it's my responsibility right. to just keep moving. That's right. right. And there's people behind us doing the same thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Allow him to do whatever he wants to do in me. It is not something I have um, to somehow try to rack my brain and, and get all figured out. I just submit to him. Yeah. You know, I love what Ian says. No, revelation and that, that, which, that which we are receiving right now, the mystery, the secret, mm -hmm. it unfolds itself when you're in it. Right. right. It, it's not information. 
Right. 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 It's not someone trying to Bravo teach you is. something. Yeah. Yeah. It's someone like, like when Ian teaches us stuff, it's not, yeah. he's not breaking open the secret and mystery to us. Yeah. When, we, when he teaches, you don't all of a sudden understand everything he's talking about. No, you have a nugget of yeah. a yeah. truth that he's right. already walked in and understand. Mm -hmm. Now you have to break into the secret and the mystery and sicken it. Yeah. Right. You have to let it unfold itself in you right. and through you so you can become it. Instead of sharing a, 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 a message that you heard from someone else, yeah. it's right. really just giving those who listen to you dry straw. Right. Right. It has to be part of your life. Right. Right. I mean, Ian and, and Justin and all these men, they preach all these crazy things like I'm talking about now. They're not doing it yet. Mm. I mean, they might touch some of the bases. I might have touched some of the very bases of the things that we teach, but yeah. it's, it's a belief system that we have. Something has right. changed in my understanding of who God is and I want to right. teach it. And I teach it to you, but I'm really teaching it to myself because the more right. I teach it, the more I believe it. That's yeah. right. Right. The more I believe it, the more I start stepping into it. Right. Yeah. It's Yahweh's understanding or His desire for us to have that understanding that we have to grow into these things. For me to believe that uh, grass is blue, it's not going to happen overnight. Right. I'm going to have to see some blue grass first. Right. But also, well, you know, it, the, the color is not really green, yeah. it's actually blue, but it's been called green over the years, but the actual color is blue. Right. Now, I would never believe that. Because I've been conditioned to believe, well, grass is green. And in the winter, it's not quite green. It's more like a brownish color. And, and of course, it changes to yellow a little bit as well. It's a whole combination. But blue? Mm -hmm. so for me to believe that grass is blue, a whole other mindset has to come into play. Another dimension. <laughs> Now, I know that's a stupid example, but at the end of the day, what Yahweh is teaching us today, we've been taught differently all our lives. It's called bluegrass. Yeah, it's, it's, it's bluegrass. Yeah. You know, and, and you say, well, there's no such thing as bluegrass. Okay, but there's a truth in the kingdom that has not been spoken. And I need you to understand this. And I listen to those on YouTube and, and, and Facebook. And there's three dimensions of the word. And all of the excellency has only had one portion of it. And there's two dimensions of truth that we are missing. Right. Mm -hmm. Then we don't have the full truth and we are not getting set free. Right. Mm -hmm. That's right. I just have to give him my life on a daily basis. Yeah. I need to present myself to him as a living sacrifice. I need to uh, reckon myself dead to right. sin and alive to him. I need to be crucified with Christ so that I it's no longer I love that Christ lives yeah. in me. Right. My, uh, my flesh no longer determines what to do. Right. Right. But also in the same breath you have to remember what the flesh is. This is not my flesh. Right. Mm -hmm. This is me. Right. Right. Flesh is the worldly way of doing things. Right. 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 I mean, I, I work at a hookah lounge uh, on weekends, just uh, like twice a week. Right. And I would sit out there and I would listen to the conversation. And let me tell you, the dominant conversation is sex. Mm -hmm. And the abuse of women. And the abuse of alcohol. And the adultery. And just sleeping around and doing all kinds of crazy stuff. Right, right, right. It's it, it being famous, being rich, making money. People come there, they drive a car that's literally falling apart, but they've got the thousand dollar suit on. Right. You know, they, they want to be rich. They want to look rich, you know. Right. They right. want to look a certain way because it's a culture that comes in there. Right. And they want to be part of that culture. Yeah. You know, and, and I like that. Mm -hmm. Because I want to be part of God's culture. Right. Yeah. It's, it's like, and I might not be there yet. Right. But I keep showing myself in this position and I have to become that. Yeah. Because I look at this one specific guy that works with me, he's very motivated. He's very well educated, he is driven, he's not fully as rich as what he wants to be, but it's his drive. Right. Right. He doesn't care about God, doesn't care about other people, doesn't care about me. he just wants that drive. He works like 18, 19 hours a day. He's focused on this stuff. This is what he wants in life. That's his focus. I know that he's going to be a rich man one day. Right. I know that he's going to be famous. I know that he's going to, because he's putting in the work. He's already he's seen that culture. He wants that culture. And that's it. Mm -hmm. Now, it's very sad, to be honest, yeah, because I also know what he needs right. and the value of what he needs and what he could do for his life, right. Yeshua Christos. Mm -hmm. But in the same breath, that is what we as Christians need to be doing. Right. And I don't believe all the stuff that I'm teaching because I haven't seen it, some of it in my life. And I have to get to the point where I believe it without seeing it. Right. But I've seen others engage in it. I've read uh, Enoch's book and I've engaged in the Word and I've seen the supernatural. I've touched on the supernatural. I've seen the miracles. I've done the miracles, raised the dead, cast out demons, mm -hmm. done all these things. I know there's another realm. But I have to change the way I believe. Mm -hmm. right. So the kingdom that I'm part of, the culture that Yahweh has opened up to us, I have to want it. Right. Yeah. How you guys doing? Yeah. 
when it said Christ in signs, Yeshua is the last name. Right. right? And then say presentation of who he is. Yeah. And I love this because it's Lord Jesus Christ. It is the Lordship of the Son's anointing. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's Lord Jesus Christ. Then you change it around. Yeah, spirit. Then you have Christ Jesus, my Lord. Mm -hmm. Well, that's the anointing spirit. of the Son and son. my Sonship. Elijah Well, my Lordship. Mm -hmm. You know, so every attribute, every part of who Yeshua is, is represented in His name. Right. It's represented in who He is. It's not His last name, it's who He is. It's a character right. that is planting in me. Right. That's why I get to a place in my life where I want to be like Jesus. I want to be in Him. I speak into His name. But right. I don't pray in His name. There's no other name by which man can be saved. That's right. I don't get saved by saying Jesus. Right. People say Jesus all the time. Right. Yeah. And there's a couple of other words they use before they put, put Jesus in there. Yeah. Right. 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 So it's a swear word. Jesus is a swear right. word on the lips yeah. of 90% of the people. Yeah. And we get offended by it. Mm -hmm. I don't care how you call on his name. Mm -hmm. call, call on that name, bro. Right. No matter how many times you swear it. Right. I don't care. When I mean, you're in my presence and you say, Ah, oh, Jesus, F this, F that. I'm going to be a hallelujah. Praise God. Yeah. Uh, I, I know. I'm in that name. But it's not a name spoken. No. Because you can live right next to Yeshu, Ye Jesus. Right. I had a lady in my class, her last name was Jesus. <laughs> yeah, there's three people. I mean, it's not the name of Jesus. It is the representation of what that name carries. That's right. Because it's no longer, I love but Christ lives in me. I don't know. I'm not, it's not Jesus' name. Right. No, I'm inside of Christ. The substance. I'm set in Him. I'm full in the yacht, hey, love, hey, no. I'm set in the name, the framework, the fullness of who He is, what He carries. That's I'm it. set in that name. And there's no other being that I can be set in That's right. that can give me this life. That's right. 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 I ain't gonna sit, you can't sit in Muhammad because He was a real being. That's right. can't sit in Buddha either because He was also a real being. Right. right. Now I feel very sorry, sorry for Buddha because He never wanted what He does to be a religion. Mm -hmm. Of course, he was just a philosopher mm -hmm. that had a certain belief system to do certain mm -hmm. things. And he wasn't fat either. <laughs> right. Right. Matter of fact, he would live off of three grains of rice and some spit for several days. Wow. Several weeks at a time. Wow. And what I'm trying to get to is that you're always calling a company of people that will understand the full measure of the anointing that he carries and that is mine. Right. Right? right? Whenever the word Christ is used in Scripture, it refers to the anointing He carries. It's that yoke-destroying, burden-removing power Spirit. of God. Right. Yeah. When it says Jesus or Yeshua, it is referring to that person of Christ. That's right. When it says the Lord Jesus Christ, it's giving Him His full title and, and emphasizing His Lordship. So each time we read about Jesus in Scripture, uh, the name used to describe He's, uh, he him emphasizes what aspects we are particularly needed to understand about Him. And we've just talked about it now. So Lord Jesus Christ, focus on the Lord. Mm -hmm. Jesus Christ, focus on Jesus. Mm -hmm. Christ Jesus, focus on Christ. Mm -hmm. You know, what's focus on the anointing. With the anointing, right. uh, you know, we have to understand that principle right. of who He is. Mm -hmm. So it is Christ, the anointed one, and His anointing who lives in me. I have been crucified, uh, past tense, but I need to outwork that in a daily relationship by presenting myself as a living sacrifice before Him. Right. And I was teaching on this the other day at uh, um, One Tribe, uh, House of Love, uh, Craig's ministry, and um, it was so powerful. You know, and then, you know Craig, Apostle Craig came and he added to it, and it was just... The combination of reminding yourself to present yourself to Him as a sacrifice. Right. And that you can't do anything to make yourself holy. He has to take you. He takes you and He begins to purify you. He really slits your throat. He drains the blood. Cuts your head off. Open up your being. Cleans out the innards. Takes off the skin. Cuts off the legs. You know, when, it's, when the sacrifice is done, He takes it and presents it to the Father. Right. You know, and it, it's something that He does. That's why my relationship in covenant with Him is key. To the right. success that he wants us to walk in, right. the full measure that he desires for his sons. Right. I present myself on a daily basis so that my life can be used for his kingdom purpose, so that I can uh, be pure as he is pure. That is how he would like me to be, how he would like 
all of us to be how we need to be because He is coming. You know, I've, I've noticed this and I say this, is I've been working at this place for a year, the Hookah Lounge. Um, and I, I don't talk about Jesus. No, I don't really don't talk. First of all, I don't understand 90% of what anybody says to me. <laughs> it's very difficult. There's one guy that works there that's one of the security guards. I don't understand a word he says to me. Like, literally, he talks a whole conversation and I just... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. What? Did you just... Don't finish a word. Don't finish a sentence. It takes a whole sentence, makes a word of it, out of it, uh, and I don't understand it. Right. It's just difficult to understand. Right. But what I have noticed, and I, like, and I talk and I make mistakes, and I say, I get, I get upset sometimes, I do stupid things, but I have noticed how they look at me. Because I'm not the same. You know, they, they despise. So there's a halfway house right next to us. And they despise these people. You know, they just absolutely despise them. I don't. Right. I talk to them, I chat with them, I laugh with them, then I give them water. If they ask for I do all kinds of weird stuff, and I don't know if they like it, I don't care if they do, but I'm not there for them. Right. I'm not there to tell them about Jesus either. I'm there to be in a position <laughs> in my Father that exudes who I am. I got to preach there right. the other night, I told you that. They opened up the hotel room for me, and I could go into the hotel and speak this message into place. And it wasn't easy. I went, got into the room, there was no AC. Wow. And there was no power. Then I plugged all my stuff in, and while I was busy talking for the first five minutes, the iPad died. Then I replugged it in, I put my phone in, and before I started with that, my phone died. Then I had to wait a couple of minutes to recharge everything back up, and then, uh, well, eventually it worked. I don't even understand, because my, my iPad's too low, and it won't even, it won't stay on. If my phone's too low, it won't stay on. You have to leave it off for it to charge a little bit, but both of them were running on 1%. Right. Plugged in and charging. While I was wow. doing it, eventually it worked out very well. Everything got said, everything got done. By the time, when I got there, the guy that was in charge of the hotel, he didn't know anything about it. So he was so rude to me. He was so mean to me. He was like, well, I don't understand why they didn't talk to me about this. I don't know if I can just give you a room. And I was like, look, I don't have time for this, dude. Mm -hmm. I've already spoken to them. The room is mine. I'm going right. to go in there. You do whatever you want to, but I need a fan because I'm going to die. Right. Right. So he's like, eventually, by the time I was done, he was so friendly. We were like best friends. Right. <laughs> I don't know if he was standing by the door listening to or if he, he could hear it. But you guys remember that one time when I was in the hotel, we were, we were having these meetings in the hotel, mm -hmm. and I was talking about the, um, the witches. Mm -hmm. And I never had a mic, not once. Right. And the manager comes in and she's like, yeah, you guys have to put your sound system a little bit softer because it's too loud. Right. But Yahweh, he could speak to 20,000 people yeah. without a mic, and they all heard him. Yeah. So right. I don't think it's about the volume of your voice right. as much as what it is, the frequency of who your spirit man is that comes out. Right. I like that. Hallelujah. Yeah. Right. That is how he would like me and you to be. How he would like all of us to be. How we need to be. Because he's coming. He's coming in full measure and he wants a company of people that has been with him, that has seen him, that has walked with him, that have understood him, that have realized that I am like he is. He walked through people, so can I. He appeared and he disappeared, so can I. You know, he climbed on a cloud and levitated, so can I. You know, and I, I know you may say, well, what would the point be of any of these things? Well, just do it and see what happens. Right. First of all, the church will throw you out. <laughs> but the world will think of you as, oh my God. And when you open your mouth, that frequency heals. Right. Set free. Right. You know, I, I've seen it. I've seen it. And you can even, you know, when people are walking with me, when we go into a place, I remember we're going into a Bourbon Street, into a restaurant, and we just go sat down and eat. But as we go in, there's like three drunk people that come running to me. Oh, and they start talking like my best friend. I've never seen them in my life. <laughs> Me and, me and Leslie are walking with, and they're talking and talking. And imagine we stand out in the front, in front of the door for like 20 minutes talking to these people. Find out all the words that they, they, were, they were all, um, one was a aerostats and the other two were pilots. And they were just talking their heads off. So, I don't even, I'm not even a friendly looking guy. Right. <laughs> it's because there's something about us. There's a light that shines that no one else can see, but the world can see it. Right. Some Christians can't see it because they say, oh, but. Right. Yeah, right. You know, as I always said, some, some spiritual born again sons of Yahweh will be hit by Holy Spirit in the face and they wouldn't even know it. Right. And they would call it some fake Holy Spirit as well. Mm -hmm. I've heard that so many times, it drives me nuts. But they call it Candelini. Yeah. Help me, Jesus. Right. 
There's a lot of fake. Uh, absolutely. Oh my goodness. I'm going to close with this. I can't explain to you how much fake is there in this world. I was looking at an ad today where you take normal paint, put it down on the wood, and then you have a brush that you brush over the paint and then it looks like wood. Wow. I mean, eyelashes. You get fake, you get underwear that gives you a fake booty. You get bras that gives you a fake pair of boobs. Mm -hmm. I mean, you have Botox for your lips. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have Botox for your wrinkles. They wear yeah. wigs <laughs> over normal mm -hmm. hair. Like there's nothing wrong with your hair, but you've got a wig on it. Mm -hmm. It's like everybody wants to have a certain image, yeah. but it's not real. Right. Exactly. Uh, I mean, Yahweh is bringing forth something that is so pure and so real, that is so absolutely unique. Yeah. And the world will run after it. The church might not see it. Right. The church is, is behind. Right. And I say the church because I love the church. We are the church. There's no, nothing against the church. The but there's a change that has to come to play. Right. The church has to change. Right. And we yeah. speak it into place. It is almost our responsibility. And we don't have to speak to them. Like you were in that meeting the other day. You knew that you couldn't speak to them about it. You couldn't tell them, listen, the frequency you're releasing is breaking people down. It's not a truth. It's a measure of the truth. We carry the full truth. You have to engage that as well. But instead, just being there opens right. up that gateway. Just being there, a son, being in a room, shifts things around. That's true. That's true. As he is, so are we. Right. And Father, I believe it's a time for us to begin to understand this. A time for your people to shift into a deeper place. And I say this all the time, it's so easy to say it, but it's not what we understand, it's not the norm, it's not, I have a do-do list of things that I cannot do, and if I master that, I'm pure and holy. It's intimacy, it's relationship, it's covenant, it's knowing my God, it's going into that kingdom and sitting in that place, having that frequency over who I am as a spirit being, over who I am as a soul, over who I am as a body, to change, to mold, to fall, to get me into the new position that the Father has called me to. Father, I pray for your people, and I ask you to open up our hearts, open up who we are, and let's progress violently, viciously into it, to become what we meant to be, to see you in full measure, and to behold you in all that you are, so we can become all of who you want us to be. Father, we love you, we praise you, we thank you, my King. Amen. 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 Amen.